Hi everybody, today is March 28th, I hope you're all doing well, and this video is going to be to capture the uh, solutions to a homework that I asked you all to do for me uh, on page, starting on page 153, I gave you several multiple choice problems, and then a couple of longer problems, so I want to cover them all with you here. Uh, please do not look at this, turn it off immediately if you haven't tried it yet, because I want to make sure that you're uh, getting the true spirit of the homework. But this, again, is to give you all the solutions to the ones I assigned. So, keep this worksheet in, in mind. I posted this for you about a week ago. Uh, and this is to give you the rules of debits and credits, the rules of what we call T accounts. And this is after you keep a whole diary of every single transaction that happens to your business, Every so often, let's call it once a month, you're going to take all those transactions and post them into a ledger, a general ledger that has a bunch of T accounts in it, and it follows these rules up here, okay? So what I've done here is I've called up our textbook. So the first one I asked you all to try was number three. How does an increase in expenses impact the accounting equation? Okay, you can see here I already gave you my selection, uh, B for question number three, okay? Let's see why. Increases in expenses cause the equity section to decrease. Okay, here's our master accounting equation right here. Now, you all know by now that we break out equity into a whole bunch of temporary accounts to measure revenue and expenses. They're keeping it general right now, okay? But we know that expenses take away from equity. We don't want to spend money. We don't want to spend our money. The less expense we have, the better. The, the greater our profit is, and profit feeds equity, which becomes our wealth. So, item B says, increases in expenses will cause the equity section to decrease. Yes, it will. You want the equity section to increase. That's what profit does. It increases our equity. Expenses take away from it. Okay? Once again, refer back to this. All right, expenses right there. When they increase with a debit, okay, we know that retained earnings and equity, in turn, increase with credits. Anything that is a debit, therefore, is not good for us. Okay? The correct answer, therefore, is B. Number four, how does an increase in revenue impact the accounting equation? Same question, basically, except it's in reverse. Okay? My answer, as you can see, is A. Increases in revenue cause the equity section to increase. Of course, revenue. Every time you sell something, doesn't it make sense? You're getting richer. Your wealth is going up. Okay? Revenues increase with a credit. Okay? Retained earnings, it flows uphill. Increase with a credit. Your wealth, your equity, increases, therefore, with a credit. Okay? Any questions on these? Get in touch with me. Number six, Coughlin Company rents office space at $2,500 a month. On January 31st, the end of the month, they pay rent for the use of the building during the past month of January. Hey, that is one generous landlord, okay? She doesn't want the money in advance. So in this case, you're paying for the month you just used up. All right, used up. When you hear that, you know that there's going to be an expense here somewhere if you, if you use something up, if you consume it. Now, here's the key phrase, ladies and gentlemen. No amount had previously been recorded. That means they did not accrue anything. They didn't prepay anything. They haven't made a payment yet. Okay? So what accounts are affected by writing this check at the end of the month we just finished up? Okay? Obviously, if they didn't have anything um, accrued on their books already, there is no liability. So that means we have to get the expense onto our books now. The correct answer is A. You're writing a check. We know uh, cash is going to... Um, uh, cash is going to increase, I'm sorry, when expense increases, hold on, that's a mistake, I made a mistake, hold on one second here, okay, item six, okay, uh, question number six, okay, I made a mistake, let me correct that right now, okay, what is the correct answer? I love asking questions like this and giving you the wrong answer sometimes, especially in live classes, to see if you're on your toes. But obviously, that's not the case this time. I completely made an error. That should not say over here. Excuse me. Bear with me, please. There we are. 
that should not say A over here, that should say C. So I've just fixed that up for you. Okay. Well, let's look back at A because that's the one I mistakenly put down. Rent expense increases. We know rent expense increases. It's got to be increasing. No question about that. Cash increases. No, no, it doesn't. We're writing a check. Cash decreases. The correct answer, therefore, is we're putting expense on the books because there was no expense recorded already, and cash decreases. Okay? All right. My apologies for that obvious mistake. Okay, the correct answer is C, and I'll save that for you. Okay, the next one I asked you to do was number eight. How many separate events take place if you sell some of your inventory? Okay, well, we know, <laughs> I'm fixing that right now in, in my book, so I don't make the same mistake for your colleagues in the next class. Okay, well, we know that whenever you sell inventory, you've already got that inventory on your books. It is an asset. You bought it, you intend to sell it, you haven't sold it yet. So, when you sell that inventory, you have to do two things. Number one, you have to record the sale. I don't care whether it's cash or credit. You make a sale. That's revenue. Okay. Uh, the second thing you have to do is get that inventory off your books, transfer the asset to expense, cost of goods sold. One, two, two entries. Okay. So the correct answer for, for question eight, item eight, is B, two events have to be recorded. One, to record the sale at its selling price. Number two, uh, to record the cost while getting the inventory off your books at its cost. Okay. All right, number nine. A company sells 400 units of inventory for 40 bucks each. They originally paid 26 bucks each. What is their gross profit? Well, if you buy something for 26 bucks and sell it for 40 bucks, you know that you're making $14 every time you sell one, right? So if you sell 400 of them, uh, what question is this? This is question number nine. So if you're making $14 every time you sell one and you sell 400 of them, the correct answer is $5,600. All right. The proper answer for number nine, therefore, is A. All right? You could do it another way too, couldn't you? You could say, well, I sell 400 at 40. Okay? So you had $16,000 rather in sales. How much did you pay? 26 bucks times 400. Okay, let me blow that up a little bit for you. I'm not sure why Excel does that to me every so often. Okay, and obviously, 16,000 of how much you sold in total minus how much you paid is $5,600. No matter how you do it, ladies and gentlemen, you ought to get the same answer. Whether you do it by deduction as I just did, or whether you do it by multiplying the number of units times the gross profit of $14 each, either way, you get 5,600 bucks. Okay. Very good. Let me save this for us. And let's move on. I asked you to do number 12. 12. Item 12 says, we're renting space at $32.50 a month. And on June 30th, we pay rent for use of the building during the months of April, May, and June. That's three months, obviously. All accounts. This is the key phrase right here, friends. All accounts were updated and accrued during the past three months. What does that mean in simple English? It means that being good accrual method-minded accountants, we were recording these expenses as we went, even though we hadn't paid for them yet. That means we were showing the expense on our books every month that went by, even though we hadn't paid it yet. And so what's the other side of the entry? A liability is increasing. Okay, so we increased an expense, we increased a liability. Now, when you make that payment, do you want to show an expense again? Do you want to record an expense? No, you've already recorded it. All right, the expense only goes on your books once. So therefore, since you've been building a liability, now that you're paying it, you don't owe it anymore. So you're going to decrease your cash and decrease the liability. Okay, 
The correct answer, therefore, is what accounts are affected by the rent payment, okay? Rent liability will decrease and cash will decrease. The correct answer is A, okay? Make sure you study this carefully. There will be a question about this in our near future. And finally, of the multiple choice questions, which of the following, item 15, which of the following increases with a debit? Well, that's easy, guys. All you have to do is come over here and follow my sheet. So let's see what we have. What increases with a debit? Would it be retained earnings? Nope, that increases with a credit. Okay. Sales revenue? Nope, that also increases with a credit. Uh, let me see. Let's skip to D, notes payable. That's a liability. Note that increases with a credit. The only one that increases with a debit would be an asset account, in this case, inventory. The correct answer is C. All right, I hope you find that helpful. Now I'm going to skip over to the longer problems I asked you all to try for me. Okay, bear with me one second. Here we are. For the following transactions of a company called Hamner, what accounts are affected and do they increase or decrease? Okay, so I'll record this over here. First of all, the owners put 30000 of cash into the business. Okay, let me shrink this down just a little bit so we can, I can show you my spreadsheet over here. That should just about do it. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so this is going to be problem number, what problem is this, number six? Yes. Okay, so owners put 30000 in cash. Now the business all of a sudden gets cash. Cash comes in. Cash increases. Okay. And, oh, I guess I should number these, shouldn't I? Okay, so I'm going to call this item A. Okay, cash increases. Now, what else is going to happen? Um, well, if the owners are putting money into the business, that's contributed capital. Capital of the owners, equity in other words, has gone up. Okay, So, I'm going to say contributed capital increases. And I'll indicate that that's equity. Okay. All right. Item B says... The company borrows 15000 in cash from the bank on a note payable, okay? It's just like you're borrowing money for any reason from a bank. So, you know, your cash goes up and a liability goes up. So, cash increases. Now you've got cash you didn't have before. And um, notes payable, which is the liability. Did I spell it properly? I think so. Increases. Cash goes up. A liability goes up because now you owe the bank some money. Bear with me, please. Okay, item C says, okay, the company buys equipment for 19000 using cash. Fine. Equipment and asset goes up. Cash comes down. Okay. So I'm going to say equipment increases, cash decreases. All right. Any questions on any of these, please do make sure you get in touch with me. Item D says, the company buys machinery at $11,000 cost, and it will be paid in 30 days. Well, we know that machinery goes up. What else happens? You're paying it in 30 days. That means you're not writing them a check now. What is that? That's a liability. So we're going to call that accounts payable increases. Okay. Item E says the company sells its services for 14000 It collects 2000 now when the work is done, and the rest will be due. Okay, well, first of all, we know that revenues go up. Revenues increase. Whenever you sell something, okay, that's good. 
That's good. Your revenues increase. You keep doing that. Your equity, your wealth will increase. But what else goes up? Well, you're going to collect 2000 immediately. So cash increases by two grand, right? Two grand, yep. And what else? Uh, let me see. Well, you sold your services for 14 grand. They got two grand right away. Someone still owes you $12,000, right? We call that an account receivable. Money that is owed to you. You're going to send them a bill. Now, they will pay that. And if they don't, you can do all kinds of nasty things to them. But uh, you, you chose your customer well. I'm sure they'll pay you. So accounts receivable will increase. Increase by 12 grand. Okay? Remember, you can sell something for cash, you can sell it for credit, but you have to account for the full 14,000 right away. All right. Because why? Because you've earned it. All right. Gap says you must record revenue when you've earned it. That is the accrual method, friends. Item F. The company, your company pays 5 grand in rent on a building that was used last month, so you're paying it after the fact. The expense has not been accrued. Oh, okay, so now you have to recognize the expense. Somehow that expense has to get on your books. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase rent expense because there's no expense there yet. Okay, increases. And... You used it up already, you're paying. There's the keyword. The company pays 5000 in rent, therefore cash decreases. Remember, guys, every word of, this, the, of these transactions can be analyzed. It can be broken down to tell you exactly what you should be doing. Okay? No secrets, no surprises. Next, we have item G, which says the company pays a three grand dividend to its owners. Okay, pays, you know, cash is going to come down. But remember, dividends are not an expense. They are a distribution of past earnings. Where do we keep that? We keep all of our past earnings in retained earnings. So it's going to come down. Our profits rise, make it rise, and a dividend drags them down and cash decreases. All right, item H says, the company buys inventory for 10 grand on credit. Buy inventory, inventory increases. And how do we buy it? We bought it on credit. We're not paying for it. We do not decrease cash. We increase a liability, okay? Assets go up, inventory. Accounts payable go up with a credit. Okay? So inventory increases and accounts payable increases. All right, we'll have to pay for that at some point in the future. Okay. What do we have next? Item I says. The company sells the inventory we just bought for 18 grand. Oh, the people who write this textbook, they really are mocking things up a great deal, right? Now, oh, this is interesting. They sell the inventory for 18, they collect 17 immediately, and the rest will be received. Ah, whenever you sell inventory, you've got to do two things. Number one, you have to record the sale. I don't care whether it's cash or credit or, in this case, both. And you've got to get the inventory off your books. That's two entries. Okay? So I'm going to say first over here. Okay? Uh, let's call this number one. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to... It collects seven grand immediately. So cash increases... And I'll put the amount in here by 7,000. What else? Well, they owe you the balance. So if you collect seven grand immediately, they owe you the other 11,000 
in the next couple of weeks. So accounts receivable increase by 11 grand. Okay, so that's the first item. Accounts receivable increases, that should be an S in there, by the balance. Okay, now remember, number two, you've got to record always, always, always a second entry when you make a sale. Cost of goods sold, expense, okay? And that's going to increase. By how much? How much? Think about it, friends. Well, you bought it for 10 grand, right? So now you've sold the whole thing. I don't care how much you sell it for. We've already booked that. We've already recorded that. Now we've got to get that off our books. Cost of goods sold increases. We're transferring the value of the asset inventory to expense because it's gone. It's got to follow the sale. So cost of goods sold increases by, um, what did I say, 10000 And inventory decreases by the same amount. Here we are. Okay. Item J says the company pays for the inventory they bought in transaction H. We bought that inventory on credit. Okay, now we're not going to record the expense twice. That's inventory that we've already bought. It's been on our books. It doesn't matter that we sold it. The point is, we still have a live liability. And now that's going to go because we're extinguishing it. We're paying it off. So if we pay for the inventory, cash comes down and the liability goes away. So Accounts payable decreases and cash decreases. I hope that makes perfect sense to you. Lastly, Adam K says the company collects money due from the sale and transaction I. Okay, how much was that? Let me see. We sold it for 18 grand. We, we collected cash of 7,000. The balance owed to us is 11 grand. All right. Once someone pays us that money, the receivable is not receivable anymore. It's now been extinguished. Just like in item J, when it was the other way, we paid off a liability. In this case, someone's got a, got a liability to us. We have an account receivable, so we are going to say cash increases. Someone just sent us a check, right? And accounts receivable decrease because we're replacing one asset with another. I hope that's all crystal clear, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, on page 160, let's take a look at that. I asked you to check out number 11. Let's scroll down to that. Record the following journal entries. Okay, journal entries. We're going to make some journal entries. So this is going to be problem number 12. No, 11. Sorry. And whenever you're recording journal entries, we always know that as good accountants, we have to have a debit column and a credit column. All right, so this is going to be a journal. This is going to be formal. And you may be saying to yourself, why does that crazy Professor Adams abbreviate debit, DR? Okay, a lot of accountants don't know the answer to that. I do know the answer to that. The answer is because it's from the Latin word debere. Okay, credit is obvious. And debere from the Latin has a D and an R, even though the word debit does not, okay? But that's trivial. Let's not worry about that. Okay, so let me move this over a little bit. Okay, record the following journal entries for Taylor Company. Okay, in general journal format. Okay, now remember, in a general journal, you should see numbers and dates, okay? So I'm just going to put a letter here as a reference. Oh, hold on. There we are. Okay, item A. Um, borrowed 4500 from local bank and trust. What happens? Okay, now always keep my little cheat sheet in front of you. Let's see if I can pull it up here. There it is. Okay. Um, 
borrowed 4500 from a bank. So you know that cash went up, and we know that some kind of a liability went up because the bank, oh, those awful people, they want their money back, don't they? So we know that cash increases with a debit, okay? We know, I'm going to call this notes payable, okay? doesn't say a note, but yeah, that's usually how we do things with banks. Now, you'll notice that I indented a little bit here. That's just good form. It says to me, Alan, make sure you put your debits first and your credits second. And I usually indent the credits, just as a reminder, okay? That's good form. A computer that you're using to enter these transactions might do that, might force you to do it, it might not. The point is, I like to do it, just to keep my debits and credits straight, because I'll tell you what, a lot of times you go to analyze these things at the end of the month, and the neater you can keep it, the easier it is to follow your, your, your tracks, okay? Very good. What is the amount? $4,500. Let's enter it. Now, after this entry would follow a brief description telling you what, um, what this was about. Brief, okay? All right, item B. Investors contributed 10000 in cash for shares of the company's stock. The company issued more ownership. Contributed capital goes up. Cash went up. Cash goes up with a debit. What will we call this? Let's call it capital stock or contributed capital, whatever you wish to call it. In most cases, it will be called capital stock. The amount is 10 grand. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get used to using my little guidelines of T accounts, this is not difficult. Okay. All right. Item C, bought inventory costing two grand on credit. All right. Inventory goes up with the debit, uh, and you're going to owe them the money because you bought it on credit. Liabilities go up with the credit. So I'm going to debit inventory. I'm going to credit. Let's call it accounts payable, and the amount is two grand. All right. Item D. Item D says what? Sold inventory that cost four hundred for six hundred on credit. Stop. 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 As soon as you see the word sold, you know how many entries? One. No. Two, one to record the sale, one to get the inventory off your books while letting the cost follow the sale. So entry number one is going to be, let me see, it says we, we sold it on credit. We didn't get cash. Cash does not go up. What does go up? Accounts receivable. Okay. And we have to record revenue. We recorded at its selling price. Okay, the selling price was 600 bucks. The second entry we have to make, still under item D, is going to be to increase cost of goods sold and to decrease inventory because in plain English, it ain't here anymore. Okay, someone else owns it now. It's that easy, friends. Okay. Item E, let me save this. Item E says, purchased equipment for 500 in cash. Easy. Equipment goes up, cash comes down. Equipment goes up with a debit, exchanging one asset for another, basically. Cash comes down, and assets decrease with the credit. Item F, collected 600 in cash from the sale you made up here. Okay? You collected 600 bucks in cash. What happens? You already made the sale, so you cannot record the same sale twice. It's already on our books. But we recorded an account receivable. So now we're collecting that receivable. Cash goes up. Receivables come down. Okay, hold on, please. There it is. Cash goes up with a debit, 
accounts receivable come down with a credit. Okay, and the amount is 600 bucks. Okay. Wait, is this over yet? Hmm, guess not. Nope, item G. Okay, G says, pay for the inventory we bought in transaction C. It cost 2000 we bought it on credit. It increased our accounts payable, okay? Now we're paying it, so it won't be payable anymore. So, if you follow my rules, you know that accounts payable, like any liability, will decrease with a debit, okay? And cash being an asset will decrease with a credit. All right, so, and we paid for the whole thing, and that was two grand, okay? There it is. Item H comes next. Paid twelve hundred in cash for a policy of for insurance that covers next year. Stop, stop, stop. Say to yourself, self, have I used it up yet? No, you have not. It's covering next year. Yeah, you've got to write a check today so you know cash will come down. Okay, so we're going to have a decrease in cash of twelve hundred. The problem is, what do you debit? Expense. Insurance. That's an expense, right? No, it's not. Nothing becomes an expense until you use it up. You haven't used it up. You're prepaying it for next year. Therefore, showing it as an expense now would violate the matching principle. So what we're going to do instead is call it what? Well, what is it? If it's not an expense and you're paying for it and you haven't used it up, it's an asset. Let's call it prepaid insurance. Now, as the time goes by and you do use it up, okay, you will transfer the value of that asset to expense. You simply can't do it now. That would violate the matching principle that I spoke about in our lecture. Item I says employees earned three grand but haven't been paid. This amount has been recorded by the company as it was earned, okay? Um, I'll tell you right, uh, right now, I really don't like how the authors phrased that question. That could almost be a trick question, okay? It says this amount has been recorded by the company as it was earned. If that's the case, then this basically says you don't need to do anything because you're not paying them yet. So I'm going to take that aggressive stance and say, do nothing. Why? Because it says it has been recorded already. Okay. Now, if it had not been recorded and you hadn't paid them yet, then you would have to record an expense, debit, increase. And since you haven't paid them yet, you would have to show a liability. Let's call it salaries payable, okay? I would never ask a question like that on a quiz, but because I assigned this as homework, in all fairness, I'm going to give you an answer, okay? So I hope that my explanation helps you. The final item is J, and let's see what J says. Okay, paid employees of the 3,000, now, okay, we're, the authors are assuming it's already on the books, it says, earned and recorded during February. The expense, therefore, is already on the books. That means that we have an expense already recorded and a liability to our employees. Now we're paying them. Well, the expense is already on the books. Don't you dare even think of recording an expense again. Okay? Instead, what we're going to do is decrease the liability to our employees. Let's call it wages payable. Hold on. Let's try that again, wages payable. Okay, and because we're paying them, cash will decrease. Wages payable decreases, it's a liability. It decreases with a debit. Follow my rules over here, guys. And cash decreases with a credit. And the amount is $2,900. And problem number 
11 is done. And the final thing I asked you to do for me, hold on please, all right, is number 12. Um, here are a whole bunch of expense of I'm, I'm sorry of uh, balances as of December 31st they're normal balances okay stop right there what does that mean normal balances remember over on my guidelines I told you not only what side these accounts increase and decrease on left or right debit or credit I also told you in, in one of my recent lectures that um, Normally, there are exceptions, I'm sorry, but there are, um, ex even though there are exceptions, the balance of an account will usually be on the same side where increases happen. So when the authors talk about normal, that's exactly what they're referring to. Okay, so that means you're going to have to look at each one of these things, friends, and decide whether that's a debit balance or a credit balance. Huh. That looks tough, doesn't it? It could not be easier. Okay, so once again, I'm going to put a debit column and a credit column right here. And I'm just going to plug these things in. Now remember, once I add these up, they want me to do a trial balance. A trial balance. Once I do it, it better balance. If not, I've done something wrong. So that that's going to give you a clue uh, right away on whether you've done something right or wrong. All right, and once in a while I do something wrong, so let's see how lucky I get. So we're going to start with cash and then accounts receivable. That's far enough. All right, we know cash normally will have a debit balance. How do I know this? Because cash and accounts receivable are both assets. Assets increase on the left, on the debit side, so I'm assuming that those are debit balances. Right? Let's go on. Okay, inventory is next. I've got a, I've got land, I've got a truck. That's far enough. Inventory, land, and the truck. Ooh, that's not right. I'm sorry. And the truck. All right, very good. Now we get here, accounts payable. Oh, as soon as you see the word payable, friends, you know you're not dealing in the wonderful world of assets anymore. Now you're moving into the land of liabilities. Okay, accounts payable and salaries payable. Don't you dare put a number there, okay? It's not going to go in the debit column. It's going to go in the credit column. So come over to here. And, okay, capital stock comes next. Contributed capital. Okay, that's 10000 Retained earnings at the start of the year. Now, this is December 31st, so we haven't closed Chapter 5. We haven't gotten there yet, okay? Right now, we do have a balance in retained earnings from the start of this year, okay? And that number is 33 grand. All right, we're getting there, guys. All right, I'm going to skip a line here. Why? Because you know what? Now I'm getting into temporary accounts. So here, I'm going to put revenue. All right, cost of goods sold. I'm going to put down salary expense. Uh, what else do we have? Rent expense. And we have finally. Um, a wonderful telephone and electric company utilities expense. Okay, very good. Revenue is seventy-five thousand. Yes, it is a credit balance. Remember, revenues normally have a credit balance. They increase on the credit side. All right. Cost of goods sold is how much? Looks like fifty-two thousand dollars. Salaries are seventy-one hundred. Remember, 
Those are all debit balances, right? Okay. Now, I think I've done everything properly here, so I am going to, hold on, I'm going to be a good accountant and draw a line and a double line there, and I'm going to total everything up. Okay, so, hold on please, I sum this column, yeah, I think that should just about do it, and you know what guys, bear with me one second, I want to get rid of these very annoying pennies, there, that looks a lot better, okay, and then I'm going to total up column E. Oh, huh, do you believe that? Isn't that something? They don't match. Does anyone see why they don't match? Hmm, okay. You know what, utilities expense, that should be a debit, shouldn't it? Okay, now it balances, all right? So I did try to trick you there a little bit, and I hope you see that reason, okay? Expenses should have a debit balance, all of them. Revenues should have a credit balance, okay? The purpose of the trial balance is to show the equivalence, the equality of all the debit accounts and all the credit accounts. Again, it's a first check. It doesn't mean you're free of errors. It simply means that debits equal the credits. A computer is usually going to force you to do this, okay? But here, uh, well, I force you to do it. So that is our answer. That is the homework, and I hope that you find this all helpful. Add this to your study guides, please. And that's it for now. I'm signing off. Take care and have yourself a safe weekend. Bye-bye.